All right, so in the previous video, we took a look at um, a button and a text field box and seeing how values in the text field box could affect how the button appeared. All right, and this is a JavaFX program. Uh, we're using JavaFX 15, but it also works for JavaFX 11. I've tested on both. And we're using IntelliJ uh, 2020. All right, now, this is a, a JavaFX uh, project and inside we have this uh, primary stage and uh, there's two rows in it. There's the slider row and the button row. And so if I run it just to show you, um, it'll be a little window that'll pop up, a little Java window, and on the, on the top is gonna be the slider row and on the bottom there's gonna be the button row. Okay, so I'm just gonna run that and it should appear. There we go. And there's my slider and there's my text box, and there's my button right there. Now, I can change the order, for instance. I can say row A is equal to the slider, and row B is equal to that. And if I go B like that, and A like that, and uh, let's make it uh, thicker. Let's make it um, 600 deep, okay? So we're gonna go like that. We're gonna run this again, so it'll be a taller uh, application window, and the, the rows will be exchanged. And then there's other things that you can change on here as well as the padding and the spacing, and you can make those changes as well. Um, so here comes the, there we go. So we can see it's a much taller window now, and the text box and the button are above, and the slider is below like that. All right, now I'm gonna switch it back. That was uh, 200 there, and row A and row B. So that's within the stage, okay? Now we're gonna go back up to the method uh, that was you can see this make slider row. That's what we want to deal with. Okay, so we're going to look at the method for that, and that's up in here. Okay, and so uh, there's a horizontal box that's set up, and that horizontal box will contain both the label and the slider. Okay, so the slider is right here. There's a new slider right there, and we say that it has a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of a hundred. And then there's also a label, and that label is of type label, and uh, it's right there. And then we're going to bind them together. We're going to put them together, sorry, um, in a horizontal box where we're going to have these little children and we're going to add all together and it's going to be a slider and then a label. But we could switch that around. It could be labeled then a slider as well. Um, and so the task here is to bind the text property of the label to the label of the slider formatted as I am uh, age years old. Okay, so basically when the slider moves, we want the label to say how old I am. Now, over here, let's take a look at the label and we'll take a look at the slider right here. So we're gonna just modify the label because we didn't see anything on the label on the on the window originally. We're gonna go label like that. And, whoops, label like that. And we're gonna say um, set text like that. And we're gonna say my label like that. And let's run it and see what happens. Okay, you're gonna see where the label actually is with respect to the slider. All right, so it's just uh, it's loading up here. And here we go. Up here, right in here, there we go. We can see there's the slider and there's my label right there. So we, this is what we want to make dynamic. All right, not a static piece of content. So I'm gonna get rid of that right there. Comment that out. All right, so let's take a look at two different ways of uh, doing this. First, we're gonna do it the non-binding way, then we're gonna do, we're gonna do it the, the binding way. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a connection using listeners, okay, which we saw in the previous video. We're gonna go slider, we're gonna listen to the slider. We're gonna go, we're gonna take a look at its value, the, the property of value on it, and we're gonna add a listener to it. So oh, add listener like that, and we're gonna add in the observable value, old value, new value like that. And we're gonna do one of these lambdas, okay? And a lambda, once again, is an inline function. So basically, we're gonna be connecting up the listener, okay, and the slider, which is listening to the slider, the, the listener that is listening to the slider, we're gonna connect it up. Um, we're gonna be passing along new value from the slider into this lambda right here. And the lambda is going to end, or beginning end, and at these uh, curly braces. So anything be between those curly braces is effectively a function that's gonna be connected to this listener, 
All right. So right in here, we're going to do something. We're just going to do something simple. We're going to go like this. We're going to go label, and we're going to say set text. We just did that earlier, right? That was up here. We're going to do set text, and we're going to say, um, let me see, what do I want my new value. Okay, like that. So the new value that's going to come in from the listener, okay, let's see if we can do this. There's a little red, ooh, it says wrap using string value of. Let's try that. Okay. So we're going to set text. We're going to make a string out of new value, yeah? just like has been suggested right here. So we're going to go like this. So we're going to compile it. And let's see if we can output the new value as a string into set text for the label object. OK, so there it is. There's my slider right there. I move it. Oh, and look at that. The number increases from 0 all the way to 100 with a whole lot of decimal points. Now I want to display age. I don't need all those decimal points. Nobody really cares if you're uh, 52.32456 or something, right? You want to do something different. So let's um, let's do something here. I'm going to go dot, and this is the beauty of object-oriented anything. Okay, so I'm going to go dot like this. Okay, so I want to bring out a certain characteristic, okay, modification of, of new value. I go like this. And uh, I want an integer, int value, like that. All right, so let's, uh, let's run that again. Let's take a look at what happens. I think I did that wrong. I think I needed to put some method, so I need to do that. Yeah, okay, let's try that again. Okay, so new value, we're going to get the, we're going to run the int value method on it. And we should get a better version of the uh, the label for the slider. Okay, here we go. And we're almost there. Perfect. Okay, so now we've got an integer coming out as opposed to a floating point number. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to go like this. Um, so we need to have, what was it? I am space plus string like that. plus years old. Okay, I think that's going to work. Let's try it out. Okay, so once again, I've got a little mini function in here that's tied to the listener that is tied to the slider. Okay, so let's, ah, there we go. I am, yeah, let's say, let's imagine I'm 54 years old, okay? Um, there we go. So that's one way to do it. Um, using a little lambda and a listener. Okay, so this is a nice compact way of doing what we need to do. And I know it's very different than procedural programming code that you would see in a language like C or MATLAB, but in uh, in languages like C++ or Java, this is a very standard thing to do. And when you're making graphical user interfaces, the object-oriented way typically is the way to go. So let's do it with binding this time. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to bind the text property for the label to the value property for slider. Okay, so we're going to go like this. We're going to go like this. We're going to go label dot text property, and we're going to bind it. Okay, so we're going to bind it like that. So I'm going to put the parentheses like that to say that this inside of the parentheses is what we're binding. Okay, so we're going to go slider dot value property. So I'm just going to do tab completion. And we're going to go like this, as string, all right, like that. And uh, and then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to go I am, and then percent 0 point, oops, 0 F, like that. Here's hold. I need quotation, whoops, I need quotation marks there. That's like that. All right, let's try this. Okay. All right, hopefully somebody's gonna get that phone. Oh, I didn't close my string. All right, here we go. Let's try and compile that again. joys of recording videos from home.
right, what did I do here? <laughs> Let's try and compile again, see if there's a compiler error that pops up. Oh. There. Let's try that again. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm putting in, this is similar to printf where you're asking for a, a value and you're formatting it and you're saying here that you want zero decimal points. And there we go. Okay, so that's using binding, all right? Either way, they're equivalent. This right here or the lambda approach, the lambda and listener approach basically end up doing the same thing, okay? And there you have it. So we looked at text fields, we looked at buttons, we looked at sliders and we looked at labels. So this is a way to get you started with JavaFX and making interactive GUIs that we can tie into our instrumentation systems with the Arduino. Okay, take care everyone. Mm -hmm.